Hey all, welcome to part two of the emergency shock build for the geyser truck series. In part one, we established what we needed, we salvaged some parts, we did all that. If you would like to see that, um, I'll put a link to it down in the description and you can, you can get that. And then in part two, we're going to walk you through after we've laid out the holes and punched the pilot hole, we spot, uh, spot drill the pattern, explain why we have a pattern. We, um, we then prep the body for weld. We drill the big holes for the reservoir and the, and the lower portion of the compression tubes. And we weld it up and get it ready to go to the shop to be uh, honed and assembled and go out to go to the race. So let's get into it. Okay, prep. So we're going to spot drill. So this is what I made. It's got that whole pattern in it. And that is going to hose clamp onto the body with the spot drill. Then we can go on the drill pad. I'll get some more. Nobody said that this was the best way to do this. What we said was, this is the way we can do this fast enough to get it done and race when we want to race. So, a little bit, should get it centered. We're not trying to drill it, we're trying to stop it. So that's what you should end it and end with. That's pretty much what you start with, that one hole and then the pattern around it. And uh, it's not perfect, it's not the best way. It's a little bit redneck, but once they're chamfered, they'll be good. All right, there's that done. It's a rebound hole. Compression, compression, rebound, rebound, compression. Now we gotta drill all these big and drill that one there bigger. So we'll get to that. I misinformed you. Um, before we drill, we're gonna countersink. Just a little countersink. Just to help flow. It's not any sort of real flow thing. But you don't put a little countersink on them, they have a tendency to whistle pretty loud. Not really a performance thing that we've seen. They can just whistle make you think something's wrong with the truck or the chalk when there's really not And that's countersink. Okay, let's go from there. All right. Res hole. Uh, reflow ports for bypass. Compression, everything's drilled. I'm just gonna go through with my finger sander and just put a little grain, take the chips off, just 
clean that each pole up a little bit so we're fresh and match the grain. So all that does is just take, make sure we got fresh metal to, to uh, weld to. We might as well leave this out because we got some work to do with it. Fresh metal to weld to and um, um, uh, cleans it up, make sure the grain is matched, like where I did that chinker mark there that's a little too much. I'll get a a uh, deburring tool and try to run around these, get them cleaned up the best I can before we go to welding. What we're trying to do is take that, take those Klingons off the back side so they don't fall into the tube and then it'll be hard to get out when we hone it. That's all we're trying to do with this. We'll have a problem with sanding them off. We just don't want them to break off in chips, big old chips that can float around the shock. I've had that happen. You know, when you do something fast, you you, you got really got to be careful. Not that. I mean, usually it's fast, like the day week before the race, and you're. Trying to get a guy out there, and he appreciates you get him out there, but he really appreciates when you get him out there with the same quality stuff as he can get when he doesn't eat it fast. They make inside the burning tools, and I gotta be honest with you, some of them work, some of them don't. Stuff for the CNC works really good. I can spin those up and make those work. And they like going fast. You can spin those way up. I know what every one of you are thinking. Same thing I'm thinking. Well, when is this blade gonna snap and the broken piece coming? Got my arm. It's gonna happen. We can all see it coming. Oh well. I'll just bleed a little bit. It's all good. Probably ought to go look for the dog. All right, happy with that? Okay, let's, next step. So there's the three use tubes on. Been a couple years since I did those, so took me a little while to get back used to doing it. Like I said, not the best of conditions, but we'll get them to the race. Now I gotta make these two tubes. And I'm fortunate at the shop had a old shock that had a failure internally. And I should be able to um, cut that remote reservoir mount off that and use it. Put the remote reservoir mount up here. Um, looks like we're, we're looking good. So, looks like it's not going to sit flat for me here, so it looks like we're moving to a vise.
That'll get us set good. From an old job, we had widgets. They go like that. And housings and tubes. We had a bunch of tubes this length, one tube of this length, a whole bunch of widgets. So we're going to use two widgets. We're going to weld those on housings. And then we're going to uh, come over and, and make the tube links. Hi, little dog. Well, how's my little dog doing, huh? No problem. All right, reservoir's ready to go. We'll clean up on that. It's ready to go. Ready to go. Let's see how freaking hot our tubes are. Which one do we want first? Want long first? Do long first? Hmm. Oh, I hope I didn't screw this up. Woof da me. Scared the shit out of me. Okay, that's good.
That is good. That is very good. Okay. Not too short. Oof, duh. That's pretty good, actually. Slightly, slightly, slightly. So there it is, it's all welded up. Now I need to pressure test it and hone it and uh, put it together and send it. Um, there's some carnage. There's an empty coffee. There's a lot of those around today. Uh, let me show you, uh, we had to cut this body apart to make our jig and get some parts off of it because we couldn't get them. And then we had this one at this shop. It had had a wear band come off, destroy the inside, so the body's no good. So we had some good external parts. We were able to use the reservoir. And uh, yeah, so somebody's gonna be racing. And uh, I hope they appreciate it. I know they will, and they have a chance to win. So let's go to San Felipe. All right, that's it for part two. Uh, we, you saw us get that shot together. It was pretty fun to do. Um, uh, stay tuned for part three. Um, we're gonna do the coilover stuff in part three, and so that'll be a good one. And uh, a note. You're gonna see this after San Felipe. You know that Josh did not race a truck in San Felipe. Uh, it was not because of these shocks. It was because of shock tuned, but not these shocks. I spoke to both Josh and Rick to make sure the shot, these shocks were working fine. And they said they worked exactly the way the other ones did. They just weren't happy with the tune. And Sa San Felipe is not a place where you wanna go with a poorly suspended truck, trust me. And so, um, like, subscribe, um, hit the notification bell so when part three comes out you can see it and you can you can watch that as well it's pretty good and then recommend us to your friends and uh, yes yeah, stay tuned thank you very much for watching